body play. Amy enters carrying Amy's body. <laughs> she lays her body on the desk of the hospital receptionist. I'd like to return this. Return this body. Your body. Yeah. You could say, do you have a receipt? <laughs> and then I would say, no, it was a gift. So, my parents. <laughs> uh, we don't do returns, just repairs. Ah, that's good. Uh, you have your insurance card? Amy opens her wallet and hands the receptionist her insurance card. The body flails and falls off the desk. <laughs> the body writhes on the floor, crying out in pain. Uh, What's wrong with it? You tell me. <laughs> Is it always like this? Just lately. Do you feed it and take it outside? I do, but it doesn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> what does it like? It hates everything and it won't leave me alone. <laughs> Is this a follow-up appointment? That's right. Uh, you can wait for the nurse to call you. The receptionist exits. Amy drags her body to a chair. The body begins to slump over. Amy props the body up, manipulating one limb at a time like a marionette, crossing its legs, folding its arms, straightening its head, pulling its back up straight. Look natural. The nurse enters <laughs> and begins taking the body's blood pressure. Uh, any allergies? Bees? Sorry? I'm allergic to bees. There are no bees in the hospital. Thank God. <laughs> uh, any medications? No. Recreational drugs? I'm no fun. There's nothing fun about recreational drugs. <laughs> <laughs> when was your last period? I don't remember. Are you sexually active? Yes, but... Uh, Let's get you a pregnancy test. Oh, I I'm gay. I'm very gay. <laughs> <laughs> the nurse returns with a pregnancy test. Amy's body sinks lower and lower in the chair. Amy pulls her body up straight. The nurse tries to hand Amy a pregnancy test. Amy won't take it. I really don't. No birth control method is 100% effective. I've got this one weird trick. The nurse presses the pregnancy test into Amy's hand. No woman thinks it's going to happen to her. Do you have any kids? No. You don't know what it feels like until you've been through it. It's not like the movies. Is there a water fountain or a vending machine? I don't need to pee. No, but you can go into the bathroom and drink tap water out of your cupped hands like a hermit drinking from a stream. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your guidance. Mm -hmm. Lights down. Lights up. Amy drags her body to the bathroom. She sits the body on the toilet. The body slumps over like a rag doll and groans. I'm pretty done with the whole being embodied thing. Honestly, I'm not used to it. I'm not built for it. Some girls are bodies and some are just minds. They decide for you when you're about six and you get reassessed around 12. This side if you're pretty, this side if you're smart. Never the twain shall meet. But I was fine with that. I was a little disembodied mind, practically a Puritan, kickball. Mother, the ways of the flesh are beneath me. I will be over here arranging rocks. <laughs> it wasn't confusing at all when I developed exactly zero interest in boys. I was not born for such lowly pursuits. I would live a life of the mind. I would read classic literature. I would listen to Billie Holiday. I would keep a three-ring binder with the details of every recorded alien abduction. <laughs> Maybe in college I would have time for boys. Maybe after college. Maybe after grad school. There should be more options. A more robust selection of containers. A container store for disembodied minds. I'd be happy as a hologram or an interactive museum exhibit with lots of levers and lights. A subscription box of fun facts. Just a witty and irreverent Twitter presence. The body waves at Amy to get her attention and points <laughs> into the toilet. Well, that answers that. Amy throws the pregnancy test away. A woman comes out of a bathroom stall and starts washing her hands. 
Amy pokes her head out of her own stall. Uh, sorry, do you have a tampon? I don't use tampons. Is there a dispenser? I use special underwear so I can free bleed. <laughs> That's right. It's really taught me to love menstruating. I feel connected to the moon and the ocean and the earth where my female ancestors have bled. If I give you a quarter, could you get me a tampon from the dispenser? Of course. It's free and it's a pad. Thank you. You can tell she was one of the pretty ones. That's what being pretty in high school will do to you. <laughs> the body dry heaves. <coughs> Lights down. Lights up. Amy lays the body on the examining table. The body curls up in a ball. The doctor enters. Uh, so your blood work came back and everything looks okay. How are you feeling today? I feel like I have a fever, headache, chills, muscle aches. Uh, were those your symptoms last time? Yes. And uh, what's your temperature? 99.9. That's not technically a fever. <laughs> I wake up sweating. My head feels like it's underwater. Headache. I'm exhausted. I'm sleeping 10, 12 hours a night. Uh-huh. My joints hurt. Uh, which joints? Uh, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, and wrists. And elbows, sometimes. That's all of them. Mm. Yep. Mm. Mm. What day did it start this time? Maybe the 12th? Maybe. I took off work starting the 15th, but it, I think it started the 12th. The 15th? The 12th. Have you had your flu shots this year? I haven't, but... I really recommend getting your flu shots. You can get them on the first floor of this building. You don't even have to make an appointment. The doctor hands Amy a brochure. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about today? I wasn't finished. I have some digestive stuff. This burning pain in my abdomen. I'm nauseous. I vomit for no reason. I get dizzy really easily. Your blood work is normal. But my body isn't acting normal. Amy pries the body out of the fetal position and pins it to the table on its back. Look. The doctor reluctantly puts on her stethoscope and listens to the body's heart and lungs. <sighs> Nothing unusual from my perspective. The body starts crying. <laughs> Amy allows the body to curl back up into a ball. What do you think is wrong? Do you drink water? Yes. <laughs> you probably don't drink enough water. Okay. Probably. Are you stressed? <laughs> of course, I'm an American. Stress is surprisingly detrimental. The doctor hands Amy another brochure. And then another. And then another. And then another. Do you take vitamins? Do you wake up early to go for a run? Do you wear shoes with arch support? Do you sit up straight in your ergonomic chair? Do you drink too much coffee? Do you take breaks from Twitter to do yoga? Do you volunteer with animals? Do you call your mother? Would you say you're an ethical person? Do you believe in God? What are you doing to reduce carbon emissions? Would you say you spend most of your time hunched over your phone watching videos of strangers, organizing their cabinets, drinking a large iced coffee at 3 p.m. and eating microwave popcorn out of the bag? Maybe. <laughs> do you drink alcohol? Not anymore. Do you drink alcohol to deal with stress? I haven't had a drink in months. I'm nauseous. I'm sick. Your blood work is normal. I feel really sick. But see, you shouldn't feel sick because your blood work is normal. <laughs> <laughs> and yet... Digestive issues are very common. I'd recommend laying off the alcohol, reducing your stress, and changing most things about how you live your life. After that, if you're still feeling bad, you can give us a call. Uh, I feel like something is really wrong with me, more than stress. Have you ever been hospitalized for a mental illness? Why is that the next question? Have you ever been to rehab? No. Was there a time in your life where maybe you should have gone to rehab? No. How long have you had an anxiety disorder? I don't have an anxiety disorder. <laughs> the stigma around mental health is really changing. I fainted at work. I get winded making toast. I shit my pants at a Trader Joe's. That's exactly the kind of thing a psychiatrist can help with. The doctor hands Amy another brochure. Is it? Have you ever been on prescription opiates? Maybe under a false name? For fuck's sake, I might be dying. This is not the only path. 
Change is possible. <laughs> the doctor hands Amy yet another brochure. <laughs> Was there anything else you wanted to ask me? Amy is covered in brochures. I'm good. Don't forget your flu shot. The doctor exits. Amy's body screams. Ah! Lights down. Lights up. Amy's body is asleep in bed. I work at a research lab that uses cadavers, brains mostly, and spinal cords. I'm training my new coworker who's really into that. She keeps talking about brain transplants and cyborgs, which is interesting to a point. <laughs> but she makes it existential. The other day she asked me if the ship of Theseus problem applies to human beings. Like if you slowly replaced each of your body parts with someone else's body parts, how long would it take until you're a completely different person? And I said, it's the brain. When you replace the brain part, that makes you a different person. And she said, what if you replaced all your body parts with parts of a horse? You think you'd be the same? Your whole perspective, your whole qualitative feeling of the world would be all horse-like. And I said, listen, Jessica, I'm on a break. <laughs> Lights down. Lights up. An alarm goes off. Amy shakes the body. Time to get up. Get up, you little shit. Amy throws off the covers. The body cries out in agony. We are doing this. We are marching into this day. Amy pulls the body out of bed. She tries to stand the body up. The body throws a tantrum. Stop it. There are people in real pain. That guy who got trapped in a ravine and cut his own arm off, that guy was in pain. If he got up, you can get up. Amy pulls the body to standing. Up. I said up. Amy places the body's feet on her feet and walks the body forward. Oh, you're a sack of meat. You do not get to have an opinion about this. I don't care. I have a life to live. Amy walks the body over to her dresser. She takes out a pair of pants. The body sinks back to the floor as she does this. Amy throws the pants at her body. The body does nothing. Oh. Amy kicks the body. Pants! <clears throat> the body reluctantly starts putting on the pants without getting off the floor. Okay, that's fine. We can do this on the floor. <laughs> now crawl to the bathroom and we can brush our teeth. The body crawls towards the bathroom. <clears throat> Amy heads into the bathroom and returns to hand the body a toothbrush. The body crawls across the stage, brushing its teeth. You have to stand up to spit. Amy helps the body stand up. The body spits. The body starts to sway backwards. Okay, don't pass out. Get back to the floor and we'll wait. Amy and the body sink back to the floor. See? Sparkles are going away. The body wretches. Amy takes the toothbrush. Stop that. Amy gathers her socks and shoes in front of the body and helps the body put them on. We're going to leave the house. We're going to stand up. We're going to go to work. Amy helps the body stand up. Sit up. On your knees. Slowly, slowly stand. Hold on, hold on to me. Okay, look, that wasn't so bad, was it? Where are your keys? Shit. Amy lets go of the body to look for the keys. The body falls down. For fuck's sake, I'm already late! Okay, okay, uh, I found the keys. We can still go. Amy grabs the body by the foot. The body crawls back toward the bed. Amy pulls it toward the door. Get back here right now! Gianna, Amy's girlfriend, enters with two cups of coffee. You look awful. I'm fine. <laughs> You need to rest. Gianna sets the coffee down. She tries to rescue the body from Amy to put it back to bed. I can't miss work again. You must. I can't. I, I don't want to. Gianna gets the body back into bed. The body likes Gianna. You're making it worse. Amy sighs and sits on the end table. She picks up her coffee. It's not getting better. You don't know that. The doctor. Forget about that doctor. We'll find another doctor. What if she's right? Then you should rest. What if? Whatever the question is, the answer is rest. Why is that always the answer? Listen to your body. Your body wants to stay home. 
What if I rest and rest and rest and rest and then I die and that's it? I spent my whole life in bed. There are lots of things you can do in bed. Mm -hmm. Like what? Good. Read, learn French, tweet. I'm sure you could live a full and vibrant life. Every time I Google my symptoms, it's cancer. I don't think you should Google your symptoms anymore. But what if it's cancer? Google can't cure cancer. I don't want to die without knowing what killed me. You're not dying. You don't know that. You would know if you were dying. False. Death can come for anyone at any time. I don't want to talk about death anymore. Uh, who am I supposed to talk about it with? Call your mom. Uh, I can't. She'll tell me I'm dying. She's worse than Google. <laughs> can I convince you that you're not dying? No. Then I don't want to talk about it. I just want to know. I want a name for this garbage feeling. If there's a name, that means someone's looking back from the other side of this thing. Someone can tell me what to do, and if there's no name for it, then I'm invisible. I'm alone. Gianna kisses the body on the forehead and Amy on the lips. You're not invisible, and you're not alone. What if it's not real? What if it's all in my head? It's real because your experiences are real. I'm going to make more chicken soup before I head out. Gianna starts to exit. You'll be late. You're worth it. I'm not. The body wretches. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely not. The body lets out an ugly cry and face plants into the pillow. <laughs> Amy pulls the shades and turns on some music before getting in bed next to the body. As long as my brain works, right? Like Descartes, I can think. That means I exist. This is my brain. I can think about anything. I can go anywhere. Okay, let's think. Um, if I was founding a society on Mars, <laughs> yes, there'd be rows of little glass bubble houses. All the buildings would be connected and you'd have a central hub where everyone would gather. You'd have big communal dinners, and then after dinner, there would be speeches and poetry and dancing. And you'd miss it, because you're in bed, sick. Stop it. We're back on Mars. It would be better on Mars. We'd have advanced technology and free healthcare, and people mm. would check up on each other. What happens if you get sick in space? Do people die in space? How do you dispose of a body in space? Do they throw you out the side? Loose out there? Orbiting the Earth for eternity? Do bodies decompose in space without atmosphere? Amy's body crawls on top of Amy. Stop it, I'm trying to think. The body lays on top of Amy, smothering her with its weight. This is very important, I'm in space. <laughs> Floating Martians in the Martian ship. Who are top sheets even for? <laughs> Amy and her body pull up the blanket over both of them. It's too hot. Too hot! Amy and her body each put one leg outside the blanket. Too cold! They pull their legs back in. Amy's body starts to snore. Space. In space. Lights down. Lights up. Amy is at her desk. Amy's body is sleeping under it. Amy's boss walks over. Amy doesn't see her at first. The body jumps and hits its head when the boss starts to speak. Hey, lady. Uh, oh. Just checking in. Uh, how's it going? What's the cinch? What's cool? What's happening? <laughs> I'll get it to you Friday. I'm sorry. But really. How are you doing? You look tired. One of those days, you know? Hmm. Did you need anything? Our meeting? Are you ready? Oh shit. Look, you don't have to tell me. I just I just hope that if there is something going on, you feel comfortable. Are you in pain all the time? Just a normal amount. <laughs> Everyone is. My back hurts, my neck hurts, my feet hurt, <laughs> I have a headache, I'm exhausted, I'm dehydrated, I'm iron deficient. All I've consumed today is Lunchables and Red Bull. My heart is beating so fast, I can't concentrate for more than 20 minutes. I will never be enough for this world, even though I've emptied myself out, but, uh, darling, 
<laughs> That's life. <laughs> that is a human experience. As long as we've been on this planet, life has been exactly like this. And it always will be. You just have to pick which kind of pain you want. Do you want the headache or do you want the burning feeling in your stomach after you take too many ibuprofen? Do you want to sit in the chair and hurt your shoulders or use the standing desk so you can end the day with hip pain? <laughs> we still have choices. <laughs> it's not all doom and gloom. But you can't expect to not be in pain. After 25, everyone is in pain all the time. That's why we drink. <laughs> While Amy's boss talks, the body slowly reaches up from under the desk to grab a muffin that is sitting beside Amy's paper. <laughs> Thanks. The body accidentally pulls the papers off the desk. Sorry. Uh, Why don't you skip this meeting, actually? I, I can handle it. It'll give you time to catch up on other things. I can leave the next one. The boss exits. The body bites into the muffin. Don't eat that. You'll throw up. Lights down. Lights up. Amy is making her body do yoga. She pulls and pushes the body into different positions. In high school, I used to make myself vomit. It wasn't vanity, I don't think. Maybe it was. I thought I was too good for vanity. I did want to be thin, thin and wiry and hot, like when a glass blower stretches orange liquid glass into delicate little spindly things. But that was incidental. It was about boundaries. About the boundary between inside and outside. <laughs> You think that's clear, right? Inside, outside. This is me, this is not me. And then you eat a cheeseburger. And what, what are you now? Some awful hybrid cheeseburger creature. You're tearing the flesh of this animal with your teeth and it's bad enough just to chew and swallow. You have to do it fast or you think too much about it and you feel the mush in your mouth and you have to open the car door and spit it onto the highway. But then once you do swallow, it gets down your throat and you can feel it moving. Your insides come alive, turning stomach acid and writhing ropes of intestines. And you're just supposed to sit there and take notes in biology class as if you can't hear your own biology gurgling. And so you raise your hand and excuse yourself and put your fingers in your throat and just forcefully reassert that boundary into a toilet bowl. And once you wipe down the toilet seat and blow your nose, you always get vomit in your nose. And wash your hands three times and gargle with Listerine and tuck your shirt back into your pants, then it's all very neat and clean and separate. This is me. That is not me. Not me can go on being whatever it is going to be. I don't have control over outside, but inside, is mine. Nothing happens inside me that I don't have control of. The yoga teacher enters. Left hand to right ankle. Right is sun, the father. Left is moon, the mother. Right hand to left ankle. Brings the energies together. Forward fold, a forward fold is a conversation. The body is a house with three floors and nine rooms. Move into place, side plank, leg up, grab your toes, stretch your toes towards the sun. The hand, the torso, or the presence, the beating heart. Work against the world, back to blank, move the pigeon poles. If your hips are tight, you can put a towel under your seat bones, here for 10 breaths. We throw a lot of emotion in our hips. It is okay to cry in a hip opener. Breathe into the space where it feels not okay. Yoga is a practice of becoming okay with being not okay. Let go of your need to be okay. Sometimes if you do to let go, and sometimes it is difficult. It is okay to not be okay. Three more breaths. Let your hands back up to three leg and dog. Shake out your leg. Make circles. Now come to a seat. Drop your head forward. Rest your hands on the back of your head. The head is the mind. Memory. The past. The perineum. The seat is the place of creativity between the two generative organs. The perineum is the future. The two generative organs. Now come to your back for Shavasana. The yoga teacher lowers the lights. Amy and the body lie down next to each other. Shavasana means dead body pole. So again, we think letting go. Remember that one day we will need to get let go of all of these. The yoga teacher gestures to everything. Yoga teacher turns on the rain sounds. Relax! <laughs> Amy and the body share a look. Lights down. 
Lights up. Amy is on a crowded train coming home from yoga. The body has the yoga mat strapped to her back and is holding on to the handrail for dear life. Slowly, the body begins to sink to the ground. Amy holds the body up. Not today. No, sir, we're not the kind of person who sits on the floor of the train. The woman <laughs> behind Amy turns around. Amy? Sharon! Wow. Yeah, I almost didn't recognize you. You look amazing. <laughs> How's your mom? Working too hard. You know how she is. <laughs> the body continues to slowly sink down. Amy holds the body upright while trying to act nonchalant. Will I see you at her birthday? I think so. You really do look fabulous. I mean, look at that waist. That's not necessary. <laughs> I've been trying to lose the same 10 pounds for 10 years. I, I wasn't trying You're to. You're joking. <laughs> Jealous. Good for you. I'm the same way. I don't eat much myself. When I got my routine, the pounds melt away on their own. I blame Jerry and the boys for this waistline. Last summer, Liam was going through a gallon of chocolate milk a week, and of course he's still skinny as a rail. I'll catch up to him someday, but uh... The body faints. <laughs> oh! Amy and the body both <laughs> fall down. Oh, somebody help! <laughs> Amy regains consciousness. I'm so sorry. Oh, are you okay? Amy pushes her body up to a seated position I'm, on the floor. I'm fine, oh. really. Here, here, this, uh, this lovely gentleman is giving up his seat. <laughs> Sharon and Amy lift the body into a seat. Oh, mm. we should get you to a doctor. No, it's okay. I fainted. It happened. Uh, let me call your mom. Please don't do that. Then let me take you to my healer. Yeah. Your what? She's fantastic. She does it all. All of what? Acupuncture, nutrition, aerobotherapy, energy work. I'll give you her card. And let me just... Uh... Sharon rifles through her purse. Amy looks out the window. That was my stop. Are you doing anything now? We can go together. You don't have to do that. Anything for Linda's daughter. I'm fine. No, no, we'll go together. I get a discount if you go. She's helping me lose 10 pounds. Lights down. Lights up. Amy lays her body on a massage table in the healer's office. My mom was raised religious, but she didn't pass that on to us. We were a Christmas and Easter family. She prayed to herself before dinner, quietly for 30 seconds while my brothers and I flicked mashed potatoes at each other. When my grandmother died, the funeral was at the church my mom grew up in. The pastor talked about her soul, has, how the soul doesn't grow old, how death liberates the soul from the wretched, dirty body, and what a relief it is to be rid of that thing. I asked my brother if grandma still had bipolar disorder in heaven, and he told me to stop being stupid. I don't know if that was a yes or a no. When I was 10, I walked into a hornet's nest. They got every inch of me. I looked like the Michelin man. I, I had to hold my arms like this and stand with my legs apart. My cheeks were so swollen, I could barely see. My dad brought me to the Christian Children's Hospital. They sat me on a beanbag chair in a room with different colored handprints on the wall. There was a cartoon playing some kind of child-friendly version of the rapture. Souls were being pulled from their bodies and dragged into the sky. The animation was this big overhead shot of the suburbs, little wiggly souls drifting up out of every house. I remember wishing I could exit my body like that because I was in so much pain. And then I did. Like, a genie granted my wish. I felt myself drifting up and looking down at myself as I convulsed and fell off the beanbag. The nurse and my dad rushed over and I could see the tops of their heads. My dad had this bald spot I'd never noticed before and the nurse had one of those perfect ballerina buns. I felt nothing. No body, no mind, empty, gone. I looked up into the blinding fluorescent light and woke up in a different room. The pain came back, but all I felt was relief. I thrashed around feeling all of it, crying and yelling, I don't want to fly, I don't want to fly, I don't want to fly. The healer enters. Turn your head to the side for me. Amy turns the body's head to the side. I'm gonna start with a few needles in your ear. That's where we start? Don't worry. 
Also, don't jump. The healer puts needles in Amy's ear. What does this do? It should target anxiety. How does that feel? I'm a little anxious because of the needles in my ear. <laughs> Relax your shoulders for me. The body relaxes its shoulders. I hear your skepticism and I respect it. That protective instinct is valuable. The danger is closing yourself off to healing if it doesn't arrive in a form you expected. You're right. I've been trying to be more open. I've seen a lot of doctors. I'm used to nothing working. Western medicine does nothing for women. Why do you say that? It's too focused on solutions. Is that a bad thing? Bodies can't be solved, only lived in, lived with. Western medicine cuts us into pieces as if we are isolated systems that can be managed separately. No one has truly seen you, not the whole picture. That's true. I'll give away the secret right now. Your body already knows how to heal itself. How does it know that? Your body is a healing machine. Your body loves you and wants you to be well. Can you return that love? Can you, with all your heart, learn to love your body? <laughs> why does that make you uncomfortable? Nobody talks like that. <laughs> That's not why you're uncomfortable. What scares you about your body? I can't control it. Your need for control is blocking your path to wellness. I don't know what that means. Wellness is a state of true being. Illness is a false self, a product of self-denial. If your mind can get out of the way, your body will find its way back to wellness. I don't think viruses and bacteria care whether or not I'm being my true self. How long have you been this angry? I'm not angry. All those emotions you hold tightly in your diaphragm, unexpressed, that tight, thick ball of emotion is hardening into a cancer into gallstones and indigestion, forming knots in your muscles. I'm angry because I'm sick. I'm not sick because I'm angry. Just pause. Allow it for this moment to be true. Feel your body. Feel all those tight, stuck places. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, think about releasing all that negative energy, all that tightness. What would it mean for you to let that go? What would it mean to love yourself completely? Inhale, bring that love into yourself. Accept the love in the air around you. Accept the love the universe is offering. The healer takes the needles out of the body's ear. How does that feel? I feel something. Not like the love of the universe, mm -hmm. but I feel more relaxed, I think. The love will be there when you're ready. What do you usually eat in a day? Not much, lately. I'll uh, give you some supplements to make sure you're getting enough nutrition. That makes sense. And these. The Gila brings out some essential oils. What are they? Frankincense and lavender. And last but not least. The healer brings out a polished stone. This is the anger stone. <laughs> I want you to sit for 10 minutes every day and channel your anger into the stone. Okay, I was in and now I'm back out. <laughs> <laughs> the healer presses the stone into Amy's hands, keeping her hands over Amy's. I know it sounds silly, but bear with me. Allow it to be true. Deep breath. Let the anger surface in your body. Let it move through you. Squeeze the stone. Squeeze it hard. Then let go. How does that feel? Good. I think it'll be three hundred dollars. <laughs> what? For the stone. It's a stone. It's a moonstone. <laughs> I'm not even sure I feel anything. If we add the oils, the supplements, plus the acupuncture, your total is six fifty. You have to buy one of the three. It's a clause in the waiver. I'll take the frankincense. Is that what worked best for you? No, I just want to smell like Jesus. <laughs> Lights down. Lights up. Amy and her body enter the boss's office. Amy tucks in the back of the body's shirt. Hey, lady. Are you busy? Uh, I can make time. 
<clears throat> As you know, I'm going through some medical issues, and while I, more than anyone, would love for them to be solved quickly, I don't see that happening, and I wanted to talk through my options now that I've run out of sick days. Do you think you'll be needing a medical leave? Because we do offer two weeks of paid medical leave. Could I take them non-consecutively? It's not how it's intended. Because I do still have good days. I, I don't need two weeks off. Just a little bit of flexibility while I go to appointments and figure this out. It looks like you've been out sick ten times in the past three months, and you've also taken four vacation days. I've worked longer days to make up for it. I don't know that we can accept unexcused absences. That's why I wanted to bring this up in advance. I'm hoping to get them excused. No, that's just what they're called in the system. I don't have a different way to enter them. Do you think I should just take the medical leave then? I'll, I'll try to squeeze in as many appointments as I can. That seems like the best path forward. Um, let me know if you need instructions for your doctor. For? For the doctor's note. I don't know if they'll... I don't have a diagnosis yet. That's why I need the leave to try to get myself a diagnosis. I don't understand. I just changed doctors. I haven't seen them yet. I have tests scheduled. We can't approve you for medical leave without a doctor's note. Okay, I can try. It sounds like you really need a break from us. Honestly? Yes, that's exactly what I need. As hard as it is, I think that's the right decision. Thank you. I'll support you any way I can, of course. I appreciate that. And we'll miss you. Jessica can handle the urgent stuff. She can always call me if she needs to. I don't know if Jessica's the right fit, but that's very generous of you. I I'd love to take you up on that once we have someone new in place. Someone who... Sorry, are... Are we on the same page? I shouldn't be gone long enough to require a temp or anything. I thought, is this not your resignation? Oh, I, I didn't think it was. Well, lights down. Lights up. Amy and Gianna are sitting by a lake in the park. The body lays its head in Gianna's lap. Gianna strokes the body's hair. <clears throat> what are we gonna do? What do you mean? I quit my job. And we agreed that was a good call. What are we gonna do? What do you mean? I'll, I'll take care of you. Don't say it like that. Like what? I'm not helpless. I didn't say that. I know. You don't have to be helpless to be taken care of. I was good at my job. You're just taking some time off. My job mattered. Our research was going to help people. It still will. You did a lot. You contributed. I don't want to look on the bright side right now. Can I just wallow for a second? Sure. I want my life to mean something. You mean something to me. Wallowing. OK, wallowing. <sighs> Work isn't the only thing that has meaning. It was for me. Ouch. You know what I mean. Do I? I want to do something. You're not, well, I was going to say you're not something I do. You're <laughs> someone I love. Why is that worth less? It's not that it's less, it's just not about me. I didn't make you happen. It is about you. You make this relationship happen. I don't even do that well anymore. It's not like when people ask me, what do you do, I can say, oh, I lie around while Gianna brings me soup. I'm a professional soup receiver. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Who am I then? I'm already dead. Don't say that. I'm sorry. Look at those ducks. They are ducks. Ducks don't mean anything. They don't worry about purpose. They just get to be ducks. Their brains are like this big. <laughs> they seem happy. <laughs> Lights down. Lights up. <clears throat> the body lies in bed. Amy is sitting up. 
To say I was a late bloomer is an understatement. For a long time, I didn't think I was into anyone. I just had these suspiciously intense female friendships that consumed my waking days. Texting until three in the morning, paragraphs and paragraphs on tiny glowing screens in dark rooms, my heartbeat quickening with every vibration of the phone on my chest, that electric shock of a phrase, I've never told anyone this before. They had boyfriends that came and went that didn't bother me. Our connection was so much more real, so much more important, so much more intimate than any connection she could have with some dumb teenage boy, no matter how often they made out in the back of his truck. He could have her body. I had her mind, obviously superior. The first time I made out with a girl, it was almost too much for me. I was too aware of my tongue, my skin, her hand on the back of my neck, the zipper on her jacket, cold on the inside of my forearm. I, I felt like I was on drugs. <laughs> like I entered the fourth dimension, which was really the third dimension, the world of bodies in space, my body and other bodies a dimension I'd excused myself from a long time ago. I kept interrupting, talking nervously, building myself a wall of words that I could take refuge behind. She put her finger to my lips, Shh, she said, and for once, my brain went quiet. Gianna enters. She kisses Amy and sits in her lap. A proposition. They look at the body for approval. The body shakes its head no and rolls over. I'm sorry. It's okay. Gianna looks disappointed but smiles. She gets into bed and spoons the body. Amy is still up. Lights down. Amy and her body are sitting in a therapist's office. <clears throat> Let's take a deep breath in and out. I want you to be with the pain for a moment. I'd rather be without the pain. Very funny. No, I just want you to bring the pain into the center of your experience. Will that help it go away? That's not the goal. What's the goal? To be with the pain. I cannot stress enough how much I'd like to be without the pain. <laughs> That's what we're working on. Uh, what? What's hurting you is your desire to be without pain. I think what's hurting me is the pain. <laughs> if we lessen the desire to make it go away, you'll start to see pain as just sensation. You won't have to fight it so hard. It's pain. It's not going to turn into something else. Have you ever done long distance running? I'm not that mentally ill. <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever had a really deep massage? Sure. Then you know pain can take on different meanings. That's good pain, though. Why can't this pain be good pain? Because it's bad pain. <laughs> Who's making that judgment? Me. The person in pain. <laughs> What's your criteria for that judgment? After a massage, I'm going to feel better. There's no after for this. It comes back and I don't know why or what causes it or when it will go away. I don't know if this is forever or if it's going to get worse. So it's the anxiety surrounding it that makes it bad pain? It also hurts. It just hurts. What is it telling you? What is it telling me? What does the pain communicate? Nothing. You're not listening. It hurts. That's what it communicates. It hurts. When you twist your ankle, ankle, the pain communicates, don't step on that ankle, rest that ankle. This isn't like that. It's a mistake, it has no origin and no purpose. Do you know that? It's telling me I'm crazy. Why do you say that? That's what the doctor said. Psychosomatic, hypochondria, OCD. Maybe it is a psychic wound. Let's find out. Where is the wound? I don't know where the wound is. Listen to the wound. Wounds. Famously talkative. You're very committed to fighting this. How else would I get out of bed in the morning? You push your pain away? Everyone does. That doesn't mean you have to. I have to, if I want to do things. What do you want to do? 
I have things to do. What does your body want to do? Nothing. Nothing at all. Let me ask in another way. <clears throat> what impulses are you suppressing right now? I want to scream. Okay. Let's try that. What? I'd like you to try screaming. Really? Scream. Why? Scream. Ah! I said scream! Ah! 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 Oh no! Ah! Lights down. Lights up. Amy and the body are in bed. Gianna brings Amy soup. Her suitcase is packed in the corner of the room. When's your return flight? Monday. I mean, what time? I can pick you up. It'll be at rush hour. It's, it's faster to take the train. You'll have your bag. Uh, just one bag. You don't think I can do it? I, I don't want you to drive if you don't feel good. I can still do things. I know. Do you? I'm running late. Uh, you should eat your soup before it gets cold. Enough with the fucking soup! Sorry. It's, it's okay. It's not okay. You should be mad at me for that. Be mad at me. I'm not a child. I have to go. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll call you, okay? When I land? Okay. Gianna starts to exit. She stops, holding back tears. It's not easy for me either, okay? I, I, I don't know how to handle this any more than you do. I, I'm trying. I'm scared too. I'm angry too. I know. I see it and I hate it. I'll call you. I'm sorry. There's, there's nothing to be sorry for. Gianna exits. The body reaches for the soup. Amy slaps its hand away. What do you want? Seriously, what do you want from me? Amy sits up on her knees. She gets in the body's face. She grabs the body by the wrists and shakes it. The body fights back ineptly. You're useless. You're pathetic. You've taken everything. You take and take and take and what do I have left? What's left of my life? What's left of me? Amy throws the body out of bed and stands over it. There's nothing. starts laughing. She sinks to the floor next to the body. Her laughter turns to sobs. The body grabs the bowl and starts eating soup. After a little while, Amy lifts her head and wipes her face on her sleeve. The body offers her soup. Amy takes the bowl and spoon and starts eating. The body pulls the blanket from the bed and wraps it around both of them. Thanks. Okay. I hope so. Lights down. Lights up. Amy leads the body into the lab and rolls up her sleeve to get the blood drawn by the phlebotomist. How many times have you been here? Five. Am I collecting rewards points? Six one is free. <laughs> For the sixth one, you should give me some blood back. By six, they'll have ruled everything out. I hope not. The vague women's diseases? The what? Autoimmune, connective tissue, inflammatory. They run in my family. All the women have one or two. It's not showing up in my blood. Some of them don't. I'm on my third doctor. They're not going to diagnose me without something they can see. Have they seen your fingers? What? Your middle finger is turning white. I have bad circulation. Raynaud's. That's a symptom. Autoimmune. Is it? Do you get sores in your mouth? Like, canker sores? Yeah. All the time? 
Take a picture of your hands and your mouth and take it to the new doctor. Do you keep a diary? No. If all you've got is, I was sick last Tuesday and there's nothing in your blood, they probably won't believe you. But they might if you can show them you wrote it down. Why? I don't know. Writing makes it visible. Even better if you get one of those daily journals with a date at the top of the page. They love dates. It's <laughs> a good idea. It took me three years to get diagnosed. My sister, a year and a half. My mom, five. If you want to be passive aggressive, you can show them pictures of your diarrhea. <laughs> I'll make them a scrapbook. A Pinterest board. <laughs> I'll hang them in a gallery. You have yeah. to be creative. The phlebotomist finishes drawing blood and puts a band-aid on the body's arm. All done. How are you feeling? Lighter. It was 10 miles. I'll see you next time for my free blood. Hopefully, there won't be a next time. Lights down. Lights up. Amy and the body sit waiting in a doctor's office. The specialist doctor enters. Your blood work came back, and um, <clears throat> it looks like you might have an autoimmune disease. Are you serious? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> I want to get some x-rays. You'll, you'll get a call from our office uh, this week to set that up. What should I do? Uh, you answer the call. I mean, what's the treatment? Uh, it depends on which condition you have. Uh, we can narrow it down, but we may never know for sure. It, uh, it may turn out to be a combination of things. We may think it's one thing for a while and change our minds. You'll have to try a few things to see what works for you. There's, there's a possibility nothing will. There will be side effects to your medications. You'll have to decide if they're worth it. Most people find something that makes their life a little better. Probably you'll have good days and bad days. Hopefully, uh, hopefully more good than bad with treatment. Either way, it will always be something you have to manage. You'll need a lot of checkups. You'll be seeing four doctors at once. You'll get very familiar with your insurance company's hold music. You'll need to pace yourself. Don't do too many activities in one day. What counts as an activity? It'll help narrow down what's really important to you. And by you, I mean your body. Your body comes first. It's important to get more sleep, eat more vegetables, lower your stress, drink more water. Cool. And some doctors will keep not believing you. Very cool. We don't have any pamphlets about this, unfortunately. <laughs> That's all right. Is there anything else I can help you with today? I don't know. It, it sounds like that's it. That's is, it. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Lights down. Lights up. Amy and the body make the bed together. They move in parallel. Mirror images. <sighs> don't you have to turn it? Wait, you, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> they finish making the bed. The body sits down. You okay? Amy sits on the bed next to the body. It's not fair. The body touches Amy's shoulder. I know. I'm sorry. It's not fair. It's not fair. It keeps repeating like a song stuck in my head. Who am I even talking to? Who's supposed to make it fair? They sit facing each other. Amy touches the body. Amy starts laughing. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's kind of funny. Or this soft, fleshy, fragile thing. No offense. I mean, I'm the part that's funny. All my pretensions. We were born with a soft skull and a weak neck that had to be supported. And now we're degenerating, like everything does floppy and boneless, too brittle and breakable. Where do I get off thinking? The body taps her shoulder. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I was drifting away again. Uh, what do you want to do now? There's leftover takeout. 
we could have more tea, we could take a bath. It's just you and me today. Me. The body lays on Amy. Me. Um, Amy holds the body. That's right. Me and me. Always. End of play. Oh.